Hey guys, Richard Older here. Welcome to the channel. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this cool testing. I'm at West Tech Performance. We're comparing carburetors versus fuel injection on a 4.8 liter Junkyard LS. So which one makes more power? The stock truck intake manifold, wah, wah, and throttle body versus an Elbrock Performer dual plane intake and Holley 750 car. Hey guys, if you're new, welcome to the channel. But what happens if you have a question? Hey, I saw this video, but I wanted to ask Richard a question. Well, you're in luck. You get to do that. Join us nightly, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on the live feed. You can come on, join the group. If I don't have an answer to your question, chances are there are lots of bright guys. They might have an answer. So if you've got a question about any of the video that you just saw, or maybe you're working on a project, Join us live, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, on this channel. Okay, fingers crossed, ready for the first startup. Let's see if the 4.8 comes on. Now that we're on the carburetor and Edelbrock Performer intake manifold, it's trying to swap on the factory truck intake manifold. Let's see which one does better. So let's quickly take a look at what happened with our 4.8 liter when we installed our Edelbrock Perform RPM intake manifold and 750 Holley carburetor on there. This thing was run with the MSD ignition controller that basically plugged right into all the factory uh, sensors and the harness. And it allowed us to dial in the timing curve at least. And then for fueling, we changed the jetting. And in this case, we actually changed a lot. We changed jetting and power valving. We even installed a four hole Wilson carb spacer to try to smooth out the air fuel curve. And as it turned out, even spending hours playing with all of this stuff to adjust the air fuel, it just didn't have that dramatic of an effect. Although when we did go too lean, we tried taking a bunch of jetting away from it and get, getting this thing to run in the 13 to one air fuel. I'm going to show you uh, the differences on all the air fuel curves here in just a second. But even when we tried to do that, that was the only time that it lost a dramatic amount of power. So actually this thing wanted to run richer, but it started out very rich and we were able to adjust it with jetting and stuff to make it run right. But ultimately here's what happened when we ran our junkyard 4.8 liter, stock 706 head, stock camshaft, stock springs and rockers and push rods. The only thing that we did was put the carbureted induction system on it. Both of the carbureted induction system and the truck manifold that we're gonna compare this to were run with inch and three quarter long tube headers and collector extensions. And as I said, we tried to optimize the power with timing and jetting on the carburetor and with EFI on the truck manifold. But run with our carbureted combination, this produced a peak of 318 horsepower and peak torque was 332 foot pounds on our 4.8 liter equipped with a carbureted combination. Now we need to find out what happened when we ran it with EFI. But first, we got to install it. So we spent some time tuning on the carbureted combination with the dual plane and ultimately the combination that worked the best is after we spent quite a bit of time with jetting and power valves. We put a four hole open Wilson spacer on there and that tended to even this thing out because you can see when we first started when we were loading in this thing the air fuel was down in the nines and then would basically get leaner up to a little over 11 to 1. 
But after playing with jetting and the spacer and stuff, here's what here's kind of what we were re rewarded with. We were changing the air fuel. You can see trying different, tried even removing the power valves and then adjusting that with jetting because the power valve is about eight to 10 jets. So we took that out of the primary. You know, we spent some time on this trying to adjust it and it, it did respond to jetting. You could see we got the air fuel curve all the way up over 13 to one and down around 12, 11, eight or nine. But actually, it did not want to run that lean. I know that that looks like that might be the optimum power, <laughs> but, but it actually did not want to run that, that lean. It wanted to run quite a bit richer than that. The nice thing is, even though we spent all of this time trying to optimize the shape of the air fuel curve on our carbureted combination, which we could never get to obviously match the EFI, because on the EFI, we can go in and adjust individual RPM points, which you can't really do with carburetion. We could spend all day doing this, but the reality is that it's just not that receptive to changes in air fuel. Even though we would make big changes, we would make broad sweeps by changing jet, jetting, you know, we'd change four jets and it would change the air fuel curve. It just wouldn't change the power output a lot. But we did spend time trying to dial in the air fuel on the carbureted combination, but the power results that we got were the power results that we got because it just was not that receptive. Although it did lose power when we made it too lean. Time for the truck intake. So the question now, after dialing in the air fuel and stuff on the carburetor combination, how does it compare to the EFI? And this isn't really a test of carburetion versus electronic fuel injection. This is just more of a test and we see this more often than not. A comparison between the dual plane carbureted intake and carburetor versus the truck long runner EFI, like factory truck style intake manifold. And here's what happened when we installed the truck okay. manifold on here. And remember, both of these were run with the stock cam. The truck manifold basically made uh, more power, made 325.6, so 325.9, so 326 horsepower. Peak torque on the truck was 337 foot-pounds, so not a lot more peak torque than the carbureted combination, which made 332. But the truck actually made peak torque at a higher engine speed than the carbureted combination. The dual planes are actually fairly good at low speed power. In fact, the dual plane carbureted combination made more low speed power than the truck did all the way up to 41 or 4200 RPM. And then the truck was actually better beyond that. We saw kind of a, a dip in the power output of the uh, carbureted combination and both of them ran out. I mean, they're both making peak power fairly early on the carbureted combination. It actually made peak power at 5,900 RPM, whereas the truck made peak power at 5,400 RPM. <laughs> it was really good in that kind of 4,000 to 55 or 5,700 RPM range. So there you have it. You get to pick which one of those curves that you want. The truck, the carburetor combination was actually better down low and the long runner truck was better up top if sub 6,000 RPM is your idea of like high RPM power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what's the takeaway on our comparison between the dual plane carbureted combination, our 4.8 liter and the factory EFI truck manifold? It's not the age old comparison between carbs and computers. You guys can argue about that all you want. This is really about those two specific things and on a fairly mild combination because this was a sub 300 inch 
4.8 liter, and it had all of the factory stuff on it, factory heads and cams. And in, and in actuality, this particular 4.8 was not an ideal test motor. It wasn't 100%. It's probably more in the mid 90s. It had a few things going against it. You can take a look at the other video that I have of where we put this motor together. But uh, other combinations that I've run that are stock 4.8s are normally in the 330 horsepower range or so. And that does they, that's pretty good for a motor that's sub 300 cubic inches. It makes more than one horsepower per cubic inch. And the thing is, whether you run it with a dual plane and, and simple carburetor with long tube headers and put that in your muscle car or truck or other kind of hot rod, it's going to work pretty well. If you want to go with EFI, even if you use a factory EFI and the long runner truck manifold, it obviously also does very well. There's little to choose from, I think, from either one of those. I think the choice isn't going to come down to the particular power curve offered by each one of them. It's probably more likely to come down whether you want to run a simple carbureted system or an EFI system. I'm Richard Holzer. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.